Hello, I'm Trixie Meanswell Danger here and I have got a big treat for you. A giant treat, a very tall treat indeed. <laughs> I've got Debbie Hayton here and she's going to talk to us about her experiences and I ask everyone, thank you Debbie, thank you, thank you for coming. I ask everyone, who is your most favourite person in the whole world? Trixie, I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you for the interview. Aren't you a short little woman? Oh, I know we all come in different shapes and sizes, but not every woman can be a six foot two or to go on a phallic man with a hole in his crutch, can he? No, she, they, they can't. Thank you for your first question. And my most admired person on the planet is me. Oh, me. Oh, you, you. Oh, that, that's quite a popular answer. It's been the same answer from everyone that I've interviewed. So, some people say you're not a woman. Scurrilous, I know, darling. And do you wear those marigolds, those lovely rubber gloves, to make you feel more womanly? Is that what you use them for? Well, I think we need to restore some truth and honesty to this debate. And I think you'll see I'm just showing another aspect of my pretend agenda. Identity as a true and honest lady woman. I've got different coloured marigolds on today. See? So much womanly expression. And as for being tall, I don't wear them to make myself feel like a woman. I find standing and looming over every other woman like a giant mop validates me all the time. And they're another colour. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. But Debbie, I've got a little bone to pick with you now all the way up there, darling. I've worn my hands out clapping for Tinkerbell. And you keep saying you're a man. And you are undoing every single clap I've ever given for you and every other lady woman. It's clapping for Tinkerbell and your pretend identity. Please, darling, can you shed some light on that? Oh, you don't need to keep clapping for Tinkerbell, darling. There's plenty of people that clap for me. All the managerial class GC people who pretend to be on your side, but are really on my side. I've become the acceptable face of perversion. Darling, is it true? Are there rumours true that your wife did ask you to leave her? I don't know what she was thinking. And then you refused. You said you would, and then you didn't. Can you clarify that for us? Well, if you need any help, I can show you and tell you who my stylist is for my hair and clothes. No problem, Trixie. You look like you could do with a bit of help, darling. But uh, thank you for asking. Uh, my wife did ask me to leave, and I said I would leave, but I didn't, and now we're over it. She wants to move to Stockholm, but I think she's already there. Do you want me to speak up since you're up there, all that way up there, darling? And you're right, not Every woman can be a six foot two perverted or to go on a foul man with a weeping hole where his penis used to be. Um, speaking about old friends now, have you been to lunch with Amy Chalinet recently? You know Amy, the brave little troon in the, in the Green Party that you used to lunch with? I wish Amy and her paedophile father all the best. A small personal question, Debbie. A lot of people have asked me, why does your mouth look like it's collapsing back into your head? Some people have asked if it's all the lies you've told. Is it um, keeping up the facade? Um, I don't have any problem with your collapsed mouth full of lies. Not at all. But I do have a little problem and I'm going to be brave and tell you about it now. 
What do you have against the girl on fire? Katniss Everdeen hasn't done anything to you. Anything at all. And if she wants to play with fire, she can. Oh, that's me and my big assertive self. I put my big girl pants on. I don't have anything against Katniss Everdeen. She, even though she didn't stand as tribute for me, did she? No, just her selfish little sister. But anyway, I don't have anything against the girl on fire. Why are you saying that? It's so not true. Like my made up identity. And the fact that autogynophilia is a disgusting perversion and not a sexuality. And my pretended gender is all, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading off the wrong thing. Oh my goodness, that sounds a little bit anti-trans. Anti, uh, anti I'm not transphobic. Oh, thank you, Trixie, for letting me get my side of the story out there. I'm going to wave my hands around a little for you to see my new expression of my femininity in my different coloured rubber gloves. And to say, if you ever want any hair advice, call me. I could change your life. Judy. I'd like to thank my special guest, Debbie, up there. Can you hear me? Thank you so much, darling. And um, I think Trixie means well done to hear all the best interviews with all the best truths. I've been reporting for Penis News. And you can take that to the bank. The sperm bank. <laughs>